For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to provide a very quick recap uh, regarding where we are currently in the process of developing our literature review. Today's February 23rd, 2021, and our final draft of our thesis, our literature review, I should say, is going to be due next Friday, March 5th. Okay, next Friday, March 5th, all of our uh, theory, our literature review should be completed by that date, regardless of when your uh, tutoring session is scheduled, that's going to be our due date for our literature review. On March 8th, that following Monday, that's when we will begin data collection. We'll be talking about our instruments first. We'll talk more specifically about your participants, how you're going to uh, obtain the information related to uh, your research questions. Um, and so this is why I think it's really important to be thinking about your research questions as you're developing your theory. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Today I want to talk about the process. This, uh, the process is how I would go about completing your uh, literature review. And the same process is how I'm going to go about reviewing your literature review. Okay, so I, I follow a process, what, what I look at first what I look at second, and so on. And this is the process that I want to share with you in terms of how you can also develop uh, the uh, literature review yourself. Then I'll uh, conclude by uh, talking about uh, receiving feedback and some ways of, of looking at feedback uh, for this course. Okay, So the process for completing your literature review. Number one, Begin by adding your thesis statement to your shared Word document. Bring it over from the Excel file if you have it over there. I uh, encourage everyone to continue updating the spreadsheet as you're making decisions, as you're mod modifying your, uh, your uh, basically any of the aspects that you've included in that Excel spreadsheet. Try to keep that up to date. But now all the work that relates to our literature review now, now needs to be over in our shared Word document. So number one, add your thesis statement. Number two, at the bottom, at the end of your theory, just above the method section, just before the method section, include your research questions. This is where your uh, transitional paragraph is going to be, and this trans transitional paragraph is where your research questions are going to be. We're not going to have a conclusion paragraph for the theory. We'll talk about the conclusion paragraph at the very end when we complete the entire thesis paper. Number three, once you have included your thesis statement and your research questions at the end, and I guess I should mention uh, the thesis statement goes at the end of the introduction paragraph, okay, just before the first main section of your paper, of your literature review. Uh, the, the third thing you need to do then is to add the main sections. The main sections are going to be as level two headings, and you're going to have anywhere from two to four main sections, right? So we want at least two and no more than four. For a theory of, or a literature review of this length of 2,250 words, more or less, then... Uh, this is a, a fairly good number to have for your main sections, okay? So go ahead and add your main sections to your Word document. Now, if you have two main sections, then you will need subsections or level three headings. I think the only reason you would need a level three heading is if you only have two main sections or two level two headings. If you have three main sections or four main sections, then you're not going to need any subsections. Number four, add your topic sentences to each section or subsection, whichever the case may be, to your shared Word document. Essentially, you're creating a sentence outline. When you're developing a thesis or a literature review uh, of this length of over 2,000 words, it's really useful to create an outline to see or to have kind of a roadmap to see where the, the body paragraphs are going to be and what kind of uh, log logical organizational pattern are you going to follow, right? So you need to be careful about how you want to organize 
your paragraphs, your body paragraphs. And I think one of the easiest ways to do that is to focus only at this point on your topic sentences. This also helps us build good topic sentences, right? Sometimes our topic sentences may be vague. Uh, they may not really be clear in terms of how it flows from the paragraphs before it, or maybe how the uh, paragraphs flow after that particular paragraph. So try to keep that in mind when you're developing your topic sentences. Essentially, we're going to finish with a sentence outline. This is the order that I'm going to be following when I look at your, your literature review. Number five, based on the subsections or sections and topic sentences, complete the research matrix and make sure that you have enough evidence for each topic sentence. That is, make sure that you have enough evidence for each of your body paragraphs of your literature review. Now, this Excel spreadsheet, this research matrix, is very important, right? Because what I want you to know, what I'd like for you to uh, know beforehand, before you really look at all the paragraphs laid out, is to make sure that you have enough support for each of those body paragraphs. It can be more difficult when you're trying to, you know, work with a paragraph when maybe you have support for other paragraphs, but you're missing some citations for one paragraph, that it's it's a little bit more difficult to modify that to uh, once you have already uh, designed an, an organizational pattern that that's going to support your thesis statement. So I would recommend completing the research matrix. That's point number five. Point number six, once you've completed the research matrix and you're assured that you have enough evidence for each of your topic sentences, then return to your shared document and begin adding your body paragraphs. You can start with whatever paragraph you want. Just begin developing that first body paragraph and then go on from there. Right? And... I would, at the same time, as you're developing your body paragraphs, in fact, after you complete the first one, take a look at the literature guide, the literature review guide, and the meal plan. I've included links in this page where you can view that information. Uh, probably 90% of the feedback that I'm going to provide you, if you ask me to look at your document, probably most of what I suggest will be on one of these two pages. There's a lot of information, so just take a look at it. Keep reviewing it as you're developing each of your body paragraphs. Just get in the habit of going back and forth between each paragraph and reviewing the content in each of these pages so that you can try to uh, find some of these uh, these points yourself, okay? And, um, and then when I look at it, I'll be looking essentially for the same, the same things, okay? So the process that I'm sharing here, this is the process that I'm going to follow when I, look at your when I look at your document. When I look at your final thesis, your literature review, I should say, when I look at your theory, I'm not going to start with the first word and read from the first word to the last word. I'm not going to read in order. I'm, the very first thing I'm going to do is look for the thesis statement. I'm not going to read the introduction paragraph until I can find the thesis statement. And I'm going to look for the thesis statement at the end of the introduction paragraph. When I finish with that, I'm going to jump down and I'll look at the research questions. And I'll see, okay, is the thesis statement answering the question? Does it re relate directly to the question or at least the main question that you're asking in your transitional paragraph? And then from there, I'll look at each section to see how the sections and subsections and even the topic sentences, how they relate to each other. All right. So again, I'll look at the, the main sections and, and compare that to the thesis statement. And then I'll look within each section. I'll look at the topic sentences only. I won't read each paragraph yet. I'll just look at the very first topic sentence of each body paragraph and, and see what kind of organizational pattern you chose and how it relates back to each of the sections. And then from there, I will begin looking at each body paragraph, looking for the meal plan. 
looking for citations in each of the body paragraphs, making sure that analysis sentences come after the evidence sentences, making sure that uh, that uh, citations are properly cited according to APA, making sure that the final sentence either connects one body paragraph to another or is functioning kind of as a summarizing sentence. All right, so take a look at the process. This is the process that I would follow when you're completing your literature review. Now, as it uh, relates to feedback, receiving feedback, here are some suggestions. Number one, before each tutoring session, try to update your Word documents. This is the first place I look when beginning our tutoring session. I provide feedback by looking at your literature review in the order stated above. So this week, those of you who have tutoring sessions uh, and also those of you who have tutoring sessions next week, I'll begin with a thesis statement, as probably you're uh, aware of, uh, based on prior tutoring sessions. One of the first things we almost always discuss is the thesis statement, looking for those key points, and then thinking about how those key points are presented throughout the rest of your sections. All right, so try to update your Word document before each tutoring session. Number two, remove all extraneous information from your Word document. For example, remove any comments that relate to text that you've already changed. If you have some pending uh, items that you still need to change in your theory, that's fine. Leave those comments out there. If you have notes to yourself, that's fine. Leave those out there. But if you've finished or if I've made comments and, and you understand what I'm saying, then go ahead and remove those comments uh, from the document. This just helps keep the document clean. And when I go in and when both of us go in, it's just a little bit easier to, to read and, and get around the document when we don't have a lot of extra comments that really don't uh, pertain to any pending concerns. Um, comments, text uh, left over. Also, go ahead and remove all of the text from the template. When you started the template, I had a lot of text in there that basically described the different sections. <clears throat> so if that information, if that text is useful for you, then you might want to copy and paste it over to another document and you can refer to it as a guide if that helps you. Otherwise, just remove it. Okay, so we're getting close to the deadline. So at this point, all of that extraneous information or the references that I included as an example, remove all of those and begin populating this information. Begin adding your own text to the documents. Number three, <clears throat> if you have serious questions, if you are lost... If you are not sure how to proceed, you don't know what the next step is, then you need to schedule an online meeting with me immediately. Do not wait. Okay, contact me. We'll, we'll, I'll try to schedule the sessions as, as I can, as my schedule permits. So just contact me and ask for a meeting if you're not sure, if these are serious concerns, you're not able to find articles, you're not sure what the next step is, you're just confused about the direction of your study, you're not sure about your participants, you're not sure how your participants or your theory relate to each other. Okay, these are serious concerns. And I'm asking everyone to please contact me if you're in that situation, all right? We, we don't have any time this semester to spend one or two or three or more days lost. All right, number four. Based on the literature review rubric, again, I've included the link here in, uh, the, uh, in the page. Each of you will receive a provisional grade based on your final draft completed by March 5th, of this year. This includes an introduction paragraph, a hook, context of the problem, and a thesis statement. It includes the body of the literature review, and it will include a transitional paragraph to conclude your theory. Again, 
We're not going to be drafting a conclusion paragraph. So if you've had me before, or maybe you've had other instructors that have talked about, uh, com you know, completing a conclusion paragraph, we're not going to have a conclusion paragraph that uh, for our theory, we're going to have a transitional paragraph. And uh, <clears throat> you can check the link uh, that I've provided here that will take you to a page in Notion that where I describe what to include in your transitional paragraph. This is going to be your very last paragraph of your theory. It's the very last paragraph of your literature review. It's the, the last paragraph that is placed just before the method. It's actually a paragraph where you're for the first time mentioning your own study because now you're going to introduce your, your own research, your research questions. You're going to talk about the problem. You're going to restate the thesis statement. Check the order that I talk about in Notion. All right, but this is going to be our first mention. Everything before the transitional paragraph, we're only talking about the other research. We're only talking about other uh, researchers, right? Other studies. Okay, so we're not. We're going to keep everything in the third person. No eyes and we's and you's. All right, so your grade, you're going to receive a provisional grade based on a completed draft. And I should also include here, obviously, that it needs to include the references, all right? In addition to the introduction paragraph, the body, and the transitional paragraph, we also need to have, very important, the references, all right? So make sure that you have included the references as well. I will grade the theory based on what examiners are likely to expect for the final thesis paper. Your grade is provisional in that you'll be expected to make any necessary changes by the final due date of May 21st by 2 p.m. All right, so this is where students get a little stressed, perhaps, when they receive their grade at this point because I'm going to be grading it. I want you to know what, what to expect for a final thesis for a final literature review. And so I totally expect that there be changes between March 5th, which is the due date and May 21st, which is the final due date of your completed thesis paper from March 5th, right? Until May 21st by 2 p.m., you'll have that time to make any final changes to the theory. Now, here's the thing. Hopefully, those changes are minimal, right? The idea is that you make your best effort in these first six weeks of the semester to try to get the best first draft of your theory as possible so that those changes, any feedback that I provide you, and any final changes that you need to make are going to be minimal. That's the, the expectation. All right. So if you're wondering, will I be able to make changes after March 5th, after the due date? Absolutely. In fact, you're, you're expected to, right? I, I would, I actually expect everyone to make some changes to their theory between March 5th and May 21st. Okay, um, let's see. I will reassess the entire document when you turn it in on May 21st of this year. I'll reassess it. I'll look at it again. In fact, I'm going to look at the entire document at that point because at that point you will have finished the method section and also the results and discussion. You will have the whole paper. So I'm, I'm going to look not only at your theory, but the entire document. And I will reassess. Right? This is why the grade is provisional at this point. Okay, It's going to be provisional until you complete it for May 21st. I'll take another look at it, I'll reassess it, and I'll make any necessary changes. I'll, I'll make changes as appropriate. Your grade reflects not only the finished product, but also the process. What do I mean by the process? The revisions that you make week to week in your Word document. This is why I'm encouraging everyone, please work as often as possible in your Word document. It can only help you. It can only help you making 
these changes, these revisions in the shared word online document. I understand that you have, some of you may have problems with the internet, but try to get in at least once a week to update the text in your shared word online document. Okay. Number five, finally, each of you is expected to review all posts in teams asking questions. If something is not clear, I am providing a lot of information in Microsoft teams in the form of a post. And I understand that it's a lot of information, but at the same time, this information is relevant to the class. And since we don't have the luxury of seeing each other and I don't have, we don't have a lot of contact. One of the only ways that I have to share information with you is through the post and also through notion. So anytime I post a new page in Notion, I usually also post it in the post section of Teams. So please take a look, right? Take a look at all this information. All of it is intended to help you through the process. As, as things come up, as I talk to you guys in your tutoring sessions, I, I come up with things that I think, well, this will help. This is uh, maybe some of you are struggling in certain areas, I try to clarify, I try to provide more information, more content related to some of your challenges, and I will post it always in Teams and in Notion. All right, guys, we're going to stop there. Um, I hope this helps. This has been a recap, right? Uh, today is, again, February 23rd. We have basically a week and a half. We look at our calendar next Friday, March 5th. We want to finish our theory so that we can begin on March 8th. Again, try to start collecting data very quickly. Your participants, make sure that you have contacted participants that you feel confident that you have participants for your study. Please do that as soon as possible. If you haven't done so already, a lot of you are sending me permissions, uh, some formats for me to sign. Maybe some schools or teachers or participants are going to ask for that kind of uh, informed consent form. If you need another type of form, make sure you're contacting me or if you're not sure what kind of form you need, but it's always best to get these permissions uh, signed. Make sure that all of your observations can be recorded. Make sure that your participants agree that you can record your observations because if you can't record your observations, your observations are useless, okay? The only way that you're going to be able to analyze an observation is through some form of a recording. Video is usually the best. Audio at a minimum, depending on what you're looking for. Okay, again, everything goes back or relates back to the research questions. How, how can you answer your research questions? What kind of data do you need to answer your research questions? And so this is why having a recording is going to be a necessary strategy for you to be able to do a good analysis, actually to be able to do any kind of analysis. Again, no recording, no analysis. It's, it's impossible. So keep that in mind. Ask and, and, and also tell your participants that you're willing to sign a document and uh, to protect their uh, confidentiality, that you agree to only use this information for research purposes that you'll destroy the information once you've completed your course. And I would also recommend that you try to reach out to maybe one or two extra participants just in case to have a couple maybe on standby um, just so that you don't have problems. You know, this is something that, you know, I, I, I've seen before where students are really confident of their participants. And then for whatever reason, and sometimes, you know, things happen that are outside our control. They're, they're out of our, you know, control in terms of, you know, how we schedule our observations. Sometimes things come up and you're not able to observe, you know, and these participants don't work out and then you're running around at the last minute. So what we want to do is try to, as best we can, avoid those types of situations. And the best way to do that is by reaching out now before March 5th um, so that you have the peace of mind that you know that you can rely on these participants to help you. 
That's that's the first thing. The second is that you become a little familiar with the context, that you know something about their teaching practice or uh, maybe the way the school operates in order to see whether or not they are related to what you're looking for, right? Remember, your research questions are there to not only remind you of what to include in your theory, but it's also there to drive your own research, to dictate what you're going to be looking for. So make sure that you don't include anything in your theory that doesn't directly relate to your own study. This is very important. Again, this is why we're including the research questions now as you're developing your theory, and it's why we're also reaching out to our potential participants to keep that in mind as well. All right, guys, we'll stop there. Make sure you're reaching out to me if you need feedback. Um, you know, as we get closer to the de- the deadline, uh, my turnaround for answering your, your questions may take a little longer uh, just because usually... I start to get more requests for uh, feedback as we get closer to the due date. So I encourage everyone, as we are still in week five, send your questions now, right? The sooner the better. Probably by March 4th. Let's see, let's look at the calendar once again. Yeah, I would say after March 3rd, Yeah, I would probably try to get all your questions included by the 3rd because usually by the 4th, if I get too many requests for feedback, it may take a while and you're going to be waiting for me to make the final changes. So I think uh, March 3rd is going to be uh, the, the last day to ask for feedback. That's a week from tomorrow. Okay, so March 3rd. Please ask before then, okay, Um, just so that you are, you know, that you have time to finish. You know, if you still have questions going into the fifth, getting closer to the fourth or fifth, your main goal should be just to try to finish. Okay, do the best you can to try to finish, uh, including your entire literature review and references uh, by that due date, March 5th. All right, guys, we'll stop there. Keep me posted. Let me know how things are going. And... I'll talk to you soon.